in the 1950s, in our 16, 17 year olds, we wanted to meet young ladies. <laughs> so we went to dancing on a Saturday night. And it was in one of those dance classes that I met Isabella, who he seemed to hit it off. And uh, it went from there, really. Most people anticipated that when you got approaching 20, you would be looking for a, a life partner. And we had no idea what that meant at the time. <laughs> Just somebody who, who you didn't find disturbing, if you like. And, and of course, there's the, obviously there's the hormones and the, uh, and the attraction and also the need, if you like, to move away from parents and have an adventure of your own, which is what we did. So we got married, we had four children, and for a while we ate it off amazingly. Eventually, she began to sort of pass a lot of the rearing of children difficulties across to me. And that developed a strong bond throughout their educational life to the point where they were off to university. That was a huge vacuum in my life, and that took some getting used to. When your partner's struggling, the thing you want to do, desperately want to do, is to help her. Quite often, if you set out to help somebody who, who feels inadequate, that increases their inadequacy, if you like. That needed intervention. So we had psychologists, psychiatrists, we had pills and more pills. And um, eventually, we just found a way of dealing with it. Well, after 50 years of marriage and 50 years of smoking, if you like, uh, Isabella developed COPD, and that, that's not something that it gets better. It gets gradually worse, especially if you continue to smoke. And it, it was difficult for me to see that. I mean, she just looked like an ordinary person, but obviously she's finding it difficult to, to breathe, and her heart is, is uh, palpitating. Uh, and, and I had to take that on board. You know, she is now ill. That has to be part of our relationship but unfortunately wanted to keep on smoking. And although she'd been reassured that it was only COPD and not anything more sinister, if you like, then on some of the tests that she'd had later on, four or five weeks later on, they found a cancer <clears throat> in one of her lungs, which responded to radiotherapy. Uh, but that went on for about nine months. And as that was uh, ongoing, if you like, a cancer appeared in the other lung which was not curable by radiotherapy, it needed chemotherapy. So we went through that lengthy period of chemotherapy and all the sickness and the care that that needed. We had wheelchairs, oxygen all over the house, we had a pump, and when we went out, we had a cylinder that we took with us everywhere. In that last two or three months of her illness, if you like, the care became so personal and 24 hours a day, that was quite quite a task and uh, it was the end of that after after about three months I was beginning to feel that you know if we didn't try something different if you like then I would be ill as well and eventually she went into St Gemma's she was there about maybe a week just over a week and then at home the telephone rang early one morning said that Mrs Spellman had, had actually passed away it was quite a relief because you can only deal with that intensity for so long before you begin to deteriorate and feel a deterioration. The other thing, of course, is that, you know, I take things on. If they need doing, I'll do them. And there's the determination there, if you like. Um, but that, it is a learning process. You have to learn how to deal with people who don't respond as you would expect them to respond. They're in their own reality, if you like, their own world. And that's, that's the difficult part about it, if you like, is that uh, <laughs> you're not dealing with a, a consciousness that's like yours. You're dealing with somebody who's reluctant and evades responsibility. And when you don't know that and are not familiar with that, that's a difficult thing to take on. Now, whatever you thought love was tends to sort of go down in little stages as you go along, you commit it to them. And from what you consider to be love is a journey.